Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He's the Christ. He's Lord. He's the Messiah. He's the only begotten Son of the Most High God. He is God by given authority from the Father, but He is not the Most High God. But He is not the Most High God. But He is not the Most High God. Jesus is not the Most High God? Really? Let's look at a, something very interesting here. Turn your King James Bible to John chapter 8. Lasala just proved that he is a Pharisee. Let me show you. John chapter 8, verse 56 through 59. It says here, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day, and he saw it and was glad. Then said the Jews unto him, Thou art not yet fifty years old, and hast thou seen Abraham? Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Before Abraham was, I am. That's God's title. Look what they did. Verse 59, Then took they up stones to cast at him, but Jesus hid himself and went out of the temple, going through the midst of them, and so passed by. Why did they take up stones? Because Jesus Christ used the title of God the Father. Before Abraham was, I am. Am. What did God tell Moses back there in the book of Exodus? I am that I am. That's God's title. That's why they took up stones. He used God the Father's title. John chapter 10, verse 30. John chapter 10, verse 30. Jesus speaking again, it says here, I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you from my Father. For which of these do ye stone me? You ready? The Jews answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy, and because that thou, being a man, makest thyself God. Let me ask you a question. Why did Jesus, why was he crucified on the cross? What, what was the charge against him? What did the Pharisees bring against him? Because he was saying that he was God. Hmm. Um, what side do you think uh, Chris LaSala, what side do you think he would take? He publicly came out and said in his video, supposedly answering me, it was more like an attack on me, but uh, whatever. I'm used to that. And we'll get into some of the little accusations that Little Princess came up with there. But... Uh, uh, you know, what was his thing that he said? He said, Jesus is not the Most High God. Now, oh, well, we should, let's, let's just talk about this and stuff. And I see these people. Well, I disagree with you there, you know, Brother Chris, but we'll just, you know, agree to disagree. If you're saved, you can't agree to disagree on whether or not Jesus is God. Okay? That is not something that's debatable. If your Jesus that you worship is not God the Father, and the Holy Ghost, three in one. If that's not who you worship, you're not saved. So all the little debates and stuff and little word games that you can get back and forth going, what about this and what about this and what about these things and have you ever cast demons out of people and blah, 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 all this other stuff. Hey man, if you don't believe Jesus Christ is God manifest in the flesh, you're on your way to hell. You are lost. You are denying Scripture. You are denying what Jesus Christ himself said. And what little... Lasala does there, being a lost man, he doesn't understand the mystery of godliness. So he'll look at things that talk about Jesus and the Father, you know, and, and Jesus praying to the Father, and he goes, just like any lost Muslim will do, well, then he couldn't have been God in, in, the, in the flesh. Denying other portions of Scripture. And again, I'm not going to go into all the Scriptures. We're, we're going to look at a few that prove what I'm saying. But uh, I'm not going to look at all the Scriptures. I've done that in other studies. You know, unlike Lasala, I actually have, you know, lots of Bible studies out there. Um, but, you know, if you're lost, you aren't going to understand the Scriptures, But uh, like La Sala. But check this out. Go to Acts chapter 20. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. You want a good proof text for Jesus Christ being God the Father? How about this one? Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, over the which the Holy Ghost hath made you overseers 
something that Lasala knows nothing about, to feed the church of God, which he knows nothing about, which he hath purchased with his own blood. The blood that was shed on the cross was God's blood. They know it's Jesus. That's not what the text says. It says God's blood. Feed the church of God, which he, who it's talking about there, God, he hath purchased with his own blood. God the Father's blood shed on the cross. Look at verse 29. This is kind of interesting. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter into, in among you, not sparing the flock. Chris <coughs> Lasala. Oh, excuse me. A little cold there. But uh, you want a good tie-in with that? Let's go to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. Verse 12. We'll start there. Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness, and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son. The Son. In whom, it's talking about Jesus, we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Unless you use a new version, they took out blood, but that's another story. But notice, Acts chapter 20, verse 28 says, God hath purchased us with his own blood. Here, the Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Wait a second. Jesus couldn't be both God the Father and God the Son at the same time, could he? Yes. That's the Godhead. Okay? That's what saved people understand. Let's continue reading here in Colossians chapter 1. Verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God? Again, LaSalle has no, no comprehension of this as a lost man. He doesn't understand the Godhead. It's three. You have a body. You have a soul. You have a spirit. When you look at God the Father, you see the body. Who's the body? Jesus Christ. What's the spirit inside there? The Holy Ghost. Lost people don't understand this. That's why Muslims reject Jesus Christ being God the Father. That's why Jehovah's Witnesses do. And apparently some of the charismaniac devils out there as well. As well as hyper-dispensationalists like Martin Richling. Lost people. Verse 16. For by Him, who are we talking about? We're talking about Jesus Christ still. For by Him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father, that in him should all fullness dwell." And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say, whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. All right? Jesus Christ is God the Father. He created all things. I'll show you another verse. He's not Almighty God. Go to Revelation chapter 1. Jesus is all these things, but he's not. Uh, what it was exactly the most high God. He is not the most high God. Let's look about that. John chapter 1. John's talking to Jesus Christ in this chapter. Verse 8. This is Jesus speaking. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. Remember? He, by him were all things created. Saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. So apparently, I guess, you know, uh, Jesus is lying according to Chris LaSalle. Because the words of Jesus Christ right there, he says he's the beginning and the end. The Almighty. He is God Almighty. And again, you know, there's so many other scriptures we could go to to turn to. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to be real long on this whole video because, you know, it doesn't warrant a lot of scripture. Um, when you have somebody and they say, you know, well... Uh, you know, I mean, like be somebody that's sick comes to the doctor and they say, you know, um, you know, I, I, uh, 
I don't have a cold right now and I'm feeling pretty good. I had a good meal this morning and I mean, you know, I have uh, stage four cancer, but uh, other than that, I'm fine. <laughs> you know, uh, no, you're in really bad shape. You're about ready to die. You know, uh, somebody comes along and they say, I'm a Christian and I believe this and I believe that and I believe and, and I, I, I don't believe that Jesus is God. But other than that, I'm fine. Uh, no, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. The Pharisees crucified Jesus Christ because he made himself to be God. We read it, John chapter 10. See, that's why they hated him. And that's why a Pharisee like Chris LaSalle hates Jesus Christ. Truly, the Jesus Christ of the Bible. Okay, and uh, I'm not going to disgrace my channel with much video of that little liar. All right, he needs to get saved. He's lost. And uh, unfortunately, most people like that that get into the Pharisaical mindset, I uh, mean, Jesus Christ, God manifest in the flesh, God the Father, you know, um, God the Father being the soul. Um, he says to him in Matthew chapter 23, how can ye escape the damnation of hell? He called them children of hell. Um, when you get somebody that's into that level of religious deception, and that's one of the big problems with Pharisees, the, the charismatic healers, uh, they prey on the sick and the needy. You get people that really truly have mental problems and really truly uh, are really you know sick and, and they, they can't be cured and everything else and they, they, they have hope. They want so badly for, for healing. And these, these stinking wicked devils, these Pharisees come along and they, they, they con them into their little system and stuff like this and it's just like you know they, they they get them in and they get their money and they you know oh you, you give more money and stuff like this and oh you know you gotta, you gotta pray and, and they, they lie to them and it's it's just disgusting and that's why so many times you'll hear these people and they say you know I was I was uh, raised Christian and now I'm an atheist or something yeah because they were raised by some huckster they got around some huckster that that you know lied to them and deceived them they never experienced true salvation with Jesus Christ nobody from La Sala's whole thing there they're not going to experience it. It's just, it's disgusting seeing this whole thing. He is a child of hell. And, uh, you know, let me just answer a couple of little things that uh, little Sissy Britch has brought up there. Um, I didn't watch the whole thing, just to be, gonna be very honest with you. He didn't play my whole video, so, you know. I mean, some guy comes out and he says, I don't believe Jesus is, is God Almighty. Uh, I, I don't have much time for him, okay? He's lost. I mean, how can I, how can I instruct in righteousness, somebody who's lost, who doesn't even have the Holy Spirit in them. Um, but he called me a racist. Uh, look up the definition. I get so sick and tired of that. You're lying about me. I'm not a racist. A racist is somebody, if you look up the definition, Google it, you know, is somebody that thinks that a certain race is superior to others and other races should be eliminated. Okay? That's not what I am. That's not what I've ever been. I've never preached that. You're lying about me. Of course, lying for La Sala is a way of life. It's like breathing. Okay, but uh, he brings up his wife, and I find it rather interesting. Um, I didn't bring up his wife. You know, he says that I'm against interracial marriage. Well, the Bible's against interracial marriage, but uh, that's I've done studies on that. Look at the scriptures. Don't come down on me and call me all these names and everything. Look at what the scriptures say. The Bible is your final authority, not me. Okay, but he brings up his wife, and I'm thinking okay, um, I didn't even say that. That has nothing to do with him being a Pharisee. That's completely separate. I didn't even go after his wife. But yet he goes after my wife and he calls her, um, he says about my wife, he said she should shut her mouth and be humble and keep the home. Uh, so you're judging my wife? You don't know her personally? You don't, you've never come here? You've never seen anything and, and stuff? Yeah. And I'm going, okay, what, are you, what on earth are you attacking my wife for? But I've seen this LaSala guy. He has a thing for attacking women. I've seen him attacking sisters, you know, friends of the ministry. And he'll attack them. He's, he likes to attack women, apparently. Hopefully he's not. I, LaSala, I hope you don't beat your wife, okay? Please don't do that, right? Uh, you know, it's, it's really a shame. But I find it interesting that you would say that your wife is black, because most people that get into interracial marriage, they say, you know, we're all one race. We're all the same. It doesn't matter. You know, you quote the first part of Acts chapter 17. Let's go to the verse. I'll show you what these people do. Acts chapter 17. They'll say, we're all of one blood. Acts chapter 17, verse 20. 
6. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on all the face of the earth. And that's where they'll stop. They'll say, see, we're all one blood. But you got to keep reading. I know that's difficult for some people, but just try reading the whole verse. And hath determined the times before appointed in the bounds of their habitation. All right. God sets boundaries. He wants people separate, segregated. You know why? Because that's what preserves races. That's what preserves ethnicity. See, a racist thinks one race is superior and all the others should be eliminated. Now, how do you eliminate other races? By mixing them up. Yeah. So, uh, who's the real racist? Hmm? You said your wife's black. I didn't even bring that up. I didn't even say it. Are you ashamed? You know? You know, I'm going to say something here. Um, back years and years and years ago, um, I used to be addicted to pornography uh, back before I got saved. And uh, it was a terrible, terrible struggle. And uh, I, I got clean of that. And praise the Lord, I've been free from that whole wicked addiction, you know, for a very long time. But I remember when I used to, to get on pornographic websites and everything else, interracial fornication, I'll say the true biblical term there, fornication, um, it was separate from normal relations. Why? Because it's perversion. Uh, what did, what did uh, King Solomon, what did he do? Uh, why did he, why did, what turned his heart away from the Lord? Strange women, outlandish women. Why did King Solomon go after non-Jewish women? You know why? Because he was a pervert. No man needs a thousand women to regularly sleep with. You don't need that many women. 700 wives and 300 concubines. You don't need that many women. That's called sex perversion. He was a pervert. And what happened? He goes out and he goes after these women. You know, and if you study it out, they're Hamitic women. And they turn his heart away from the Lord. Interracial marriage is wrong. And don't give me this thing of, well, what about Moses' Ethiopian women? The whole, the, the whole Ethiopian wife. The whole thing there was Miriam and Aaron were speaking against Moses. They looked for him to do something wrong so that they could take his position from him. See? They waited for something that Moses did wrong. And as soon as he, he married interracially, which was wrong, you see it all through the Old Testament, Ezra and Nehemiah, Ezra and Nehemiah read those two you know, books of the Bible. You'll see it very clearly there. They're not supposed to be intermarrying with other people and things like that. They waited till Moses did one thing wrong, and then they jump and they say, oh, see, see, oh, look at that, look at that, because they were trying to usurp his position. God had put Moses into that high position. That's why they got in trouble with the Lord, Miriam and Aaron. But, you know, again, I didn't even bring the thing up. You know, I think, honestly, you know that what you're doing is wrong. And, and let me ask you this question, too. For uh, La Sala or any of his little followers there and things that are, oh, interracial marriage is fine. Oh, and all this. Okay, um, who formed the anti miscegenation laws here in America? Uh, why were there anti miscegenation laws right up until, I forget the year, uh, in the 1960s or something like that, with this, this uh, Loving versus Virginia case and things where you had a black woman and a white man? And by the way, they were represented by two Jesuit trained lawyers. Cohen and I forget the other guy's name. I have a video on it. Again, look it up. It's historical fact. You know, they, people get so upset at me. You know, oh, you think the Jesuits are behind everything? Well, you know, when I see a name and the guy was trained at Georgetown University or, or some other thing or Fordham or something like that, I kind of go, you know what? Yeah, he's a Jesuit. Why? Because that's where he was trained. <laughs> I know that's hard for people to understand, but, uh, you know, but, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm called a racist. Um, uh, I'm a, I was a loner, and he says uh, he lives up in the middle of nowhere, right near the beginning of the video, you know. And I, I kind of find that funny. You know, I, I find that actually very ironic um, because I actually live in town, okay. Um, there are houses all around me. I don't live in the middle of nowhere, right. And, I, you know, the real ir ironic part of it is that Chris LaSala is out in the middle of nowhere someplace building some kind of little Jim Jones retreat or something like this, you know, free Kool-Aid this Sunday only. 
And, uh, you know, and I'm going, wait a second here. I live in town. He's building a survivalist retreat out in the middle of nowhere or a little special sanctuary city or something like this. You know, uh, I mean, let's, let's, let's pause and have a moment of, of uh, ironic, <laughs> I don't know what you want to say. It's just like, okay, you know, I live in town. I don't live in the middle of nowhere. See, rumors get started and they get spread. And then it's like people are going, you know, I mean, my wife and I, we bought some remote property when we first came to Maine and we never were able to build on it because we had a Roman Catholic neighbor that we were dealing with, you know. And, you know, we, I eventually finally had the chance to preach to him when he was sober and uh, he rejected Jesus Christ, just boom, flat out rejected him and he went to hell, you know. And, and uh, you know, so it's like for, you know, three years basically, we weren't able to build back on our land and now it's like, you know, we don't live in the middle of nowhere is the whole point, okay. Um, he calls me an arrogant, sarcastic child of the devil, you know, well, oh, poor little thing, you know. It's, it's good that you weren't sucking your thumb when you said that, because that might have made you look stupid. But, uh, what was the other things there? Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, yeah, the thing about me being a loner. Uh, I love that one, too, you know, where's his church at? And stuff like this. Um, again, let me explain, all right? Uh, the name of this ministry, you ready? I'll talk slow so that... You can get this, LaSala. It's King James Video Ministries. This is a teaching and preaching ministry. All right? I know you respect Stephen Anderson because he has a Babel building and stuff and whatever else, and, and you have such discernment from the Holy Spirit that you would respect Anderson over an actual Bible believer. You know, way to go there. But... Uh, this is a video ministry, all right? I don't record everything that we do. Okay, do you understand that? When we go, when we meet with people in the local area here and we're dealing with people and things, I don't record it. Why? Because sometimes they're upset about situations and things. They're crying. Uh, I don't put that in video, all right? Um, and by the way, if you say, oh, you've, all you ever do is just stand there in front of your books and stuff. I'm sorry. I don't have a multi-million dollar studio. Okay. I, I use my books when I'm preaching many times. I'll grab something to get a quote to show it on the camera. All right. And um, I searched all of his videos and he doesn't do anything but stand beside his wife in the videos. Uh, okay. Again, uh, um, why don't you do a little bit better search and see actually there are videos of me preaching in Baptist churches with a suit and tie on and the whole deal. You know, okay. Uh, so, you know, it just, it's absurdity. Uh, is there anything else I want to mention? Oh, and you know, I do want to say this too about the whole thing of the, where's his church deal? Okay, um, for years and years and years, uh, I've met people and, you know, They've been, you know, blessed by the preaching and uh, the things that the Lord's helped me to be able to come out with and things. And praise the Lord. I mean, all glory for this ministry goes to the Lord. But, you know, I get this thing over and over again of, you know, brother, we got to get you into a church. You know, we got to get you to some kind of a church. You know what church buildings are? Church buildings, most of them are cults of personality built around one man. And that's why you see like J. Frank Norris, you know, uh, he had the two big, biggest Baptist churches back in the early 1900s. Um, his one church now is uh, like Charismatics have it or something, um, some modern version guy. And uh, the other one is in Detroit. I think the one was in Fort Worth, Texas. The other's in, in uh, Detroit, if I remember correctly. The one in Detroit is literally just an abandoned old building now. The only thing attending it is rats. Okay, why? Because the people are there to worship J. Frank Norris. That's why, right? Uh, you know, that's that's what church buildings are about. So you know, I, again, this little carnal. He's very, very. He's Chris LaSalle has got some real pride issues. Okay, um, you know, he attacks my wife, and I didn't even bring up anything about his wife. I wasn't even going to bring up the fact, you know, that he's ruined a, a black woman. It's a shame that he he's ruined her, you know. 
ethnic uh, uh, diversity that God gave her. Uh, and yes, your children are not going to be able to grow up, you know, uh, what are they going to be? You know, La Sala, what is that, I guess French or something? You know, they're, they're French African? I mean, what is that? You know, I mean, when, when we get to heaven, God notices distinction. You know, again, you say, what is the scripture on that? I'll show you, because I know a lot of his people are not going to read or going to look at my interracial marriage uh, thing. Um, the study on interracial marriage, I'm saying. Um, Revelation chapter 5, verse 9. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book and to open the seals thereof, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. God looks down at all the different races. It's not really a Bible word, but we'll use it because it's the common one accepted today. God looks down at all the races and he says, I love that distinction. When they all tried to get together at the Tower of Babel, God said, no, I want you separate. I want you split up. There's beauty in that. There's distinction, diversity. That's what I stand for. I'm not going to go marry a beautiful black woman and destroy her. Take away her, her unique ethnicity, her kindred that you know she is in God's sight. I'm not going to take that. Some beautiful black woman should marry a handsome black man. And a beautiful white woman should marry a handsome white man. Why? So that they have children that can resemble that unique distinction that God made them. See, a real racist is somebody that blends them to eliminate that unique ethnicity. And again, you know, I'll, I'll just pose this question to those out there. I mean, because this is one of the big things that's mind controlling, you know, people and stuff. You hear, um, you know, you're a racist and everybody goes, oh, and you get scared, you know, I don't want to say anything that's racist. The whole thing's just a politically correct little game that's played. Um, how are you going to bring all the world people together? Through segregation or integration? Integration. And by the way, this uh, Loving versus Virginia thing where they overthrew the anti-miscegenation laws, where LaSala would have gone to jail for doing what he did. Um, when they overthrew that, they talked to this woman, Mrs. Loving, and she said, I'm thankful. I'm not, this is just a, I'm just kind of not, this is an exact quote, but you can see the video where I did quote her exactly. But she basically said, she's thankful that this anti-miscegenation thing has been done away with. And she said, next it's going to be the anti-sodomy laws. Why? Because she was a pervert. So sorry. <laughs> so that's going to be it. I'm not, you know, I'm not going to waste any more time on this Lasala guy. Um, quite frankly, I have much, much better things to do. I mean, he's a Pharisee. He rejects that Jesus Christ is God the Father. That's why the Pharisees put Jesus to death. They didn't like the fact the fact that he was calling himself God the Father. They didn't like that. They called it blasphemy. And it wasn't blasphemy because Jesus Christ not only was, but he is God the Father. So um, that's going to be it for the video. Let me see if I can just do something here as a little, little bit of a, a unique thing here. Plug this just for the people out there that think, uh, you know, this, this to kind of clear up something, a little bit of this confusion stuff. You know, let me go over here quickly. Okay, sorry, I was trying to use my regular camera just to show you here, but uh, it's not going to work that way. Um, <clears throat> here in the recording studio, you can see it, you know, okay. Here in the recording studio, looking out the window. Sorry for the handshaking. Yes, sir. We are in the middle of nowhere here. I mean, look at this. There's just nothing but trees and mountains all around. That's not a truck going by. That's a that was a grizzly bear, and um, yep, we are we are definitely out in the boondocks here, man. I just tell you what. I mean, there's just yeah, there's a factory up the road there, up in there, back in there. You know, this is the uh, charismaniac devil building over here. Masala would be welcome there, I'm sure. But uh, yep, that's this is the middle of nowhere. I'll tell you.